Hi, I'm Ubanga and I'm developing a game where you build a town on a tiny planet that can be played in VR. In the last couple of episodes I showed you how I procedurally regenerate my planets and how I implemented camera controls for both PC and VR. In this video I wanted to work on the build system that allows players to place buildings on the surface of the planet. However, I quickly realized this video was getting pretty long and most of you have the attention span of Doc, the Doc from Up, so I decided to split it into two parts. When developing a system like this, the smart thing to do would be to get a little test cube and make sure you can place it all around your planet before you start modeling your buildings. However, I'm very visually oriented, so I did the exact opposite. I made my models first and then I started working on my system. I take this approach all the time. It helps keep me motivated, I don't stare at a grey cube for hours and hours, and I have something to show you guys. So I got some references, fired up Blender, and started modeling some buildings. I tried to keep the art direction coherent. For example, all the roofs are pretty steep already, but they get a little bit steeper once you get to the top. And this isn't just limited to roofs, it also happens in the lighthouse and the windmill. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the art direction I chose. It ended up somewhere between medieval and viking, I kinda like it. But I'm also tempted to take it a completely different direction. A more sci-fi game, where you start a colony on an alien planet. But for now, it doesn't really matter, I have some time to make the decision later. I think most systems will stay the same, people will still need a place to live, there will still be a need for gathering resources and for processing them. So until I finished all those basic systems, the setting is just a skin. Let me know in the comments what you think. Should I stick with this style or should I explore a sci-fi look? To texture my models, I used a technique that I learned from Infianza. I will leave a couple of links in the description of this video. He makes really great Blender tutorials, as well as some Unity stuff. Anyway, usually when you texture a model, you have this texture, which is an image, and a UV map, which defines where each face of the model goes on the texture. But in this low poly style, there's no real need for detailed textures. So what Infianza does is, he scales down each of his UV faces to zero, basically creating a single point. And then he has this really small texture, 8 by 8 pixels, where each pixel is a different color. And then, you can simply drag those UV faces, those points, to whatever color you want them to be on the texture. It's a really fast, clever and efficient way to texture these low poly models. For now, I just used the texture with the colors that MVNs have provided, but at some point I will need to make my own. To make it fit a little bit better with the art style of the rest of the game. After a couple of days of modeling, I ended up with a bunch of houses for people to live in, a town center as a central place for the village, a little bakery, a foraging hut to gather berries and such, a lumberjack base to gather wood and a sawmill to turn them into planks, a mine or a stone quarry, a lighthouse and a dock for boats, and a farm with farm fields to grow wheat and a windmill to process it into flour. And like I mentioned before, it's not a 100% certainty that I will use all of these buildings, or even if I will stay with this setting. But it is nice to have these placeholders while I develop these systems, such as placing buildings, gathering resources and processing them. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about how we're going to place these buildings on the surface of the planet. But there's one thing I want to talk about right now, because it has a high impact on the aesthetics of the buildings. You see, we have these flat buildings that we're trying to place on this relatively small sphere, and when you try to do that, especially with these bigger buildings like this town center over here, you can see that it sticks out of the ground. My first solution was to extend the floor of the building into the ground a little bit more, as you can see here. But at least to me, it still looks pretty weird, especially if you take a look at this dock over here. See how the end of the dock sticks out of the water a lot more than the beginning? It just doesn't look right. So 
So the thing that I want to do, and I think will also add a lot to our aesthetics, is to skew the buildings. Basically wrapping them around the surface of the planet. Because I thought this would take a lot of time and trial and error, I created a new test project, so I wouldn't be messing around too much in my own project. This also nicely illustrates my point from earlier, about visual driven development. We could have easily been looking at something like this for the first 10 episodes of this series, while I'm developing all the underlying systems. But I would rather look at something like this, it keeps me more motivated, so I make sure everything looks nice before I move on to the next stage of my project. But I digress. So, how do you wrap a flat building around the spherical surface of a planet? Turns out it's pretty easy actually. For each of the points in my building's mesh, I do the following. I take the height of the point from a ground plane and multiply that by a scale that's dependent on the radius of the planet. And I then store that as a value called offset. I then temporarily move that point to the ground plane by making its height zero. And then I adjust that point to be at the coordinate space of the planet instead of the building itself. With the center of the planet being the origin, I normalize that point, making it a magnitude of one. I multiply that by the distance from the center plus the offset. And then I just bring it back to the coordinate space of the building. Before I started working on this, I spent a lot of time thinking about this, and I thought this would take me about a week to implement. I ended up being wrong. It took me about an hour to get it working in my test project, and then about another hour to get it implemented in the game. Of course, I got my math and thinking wrong a couple of times, which ended up in some pretty interesting results, but those issues were easily fixed. So it was nice that something ended up being quicker than expected for a change. I'm a big fan of the skewed effect, it makes the buildings look pretty cute, and they fit on any size planet that I make. So yeah, in this episode, we made a dozen or so buildings and made sure that they fit on the surface of the planet. In the next episode, we're going to work on placing them on the surface. So subscribe so you don't miss it, and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. See you later, bye!